What's up YouTube, it's your boy Nash here, welcome back to the channel, and for today's video, we actually have some Yu-Gi-Oh! news for you guys. Um, this is actually the last of the news news that I had for for this past Tuesday. I, I know I did say, I did say I was going to do it on Saturday, which was tomorrow, but truth be told, it dawned on me that I was going to open up These mega tins. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> um, I know that you guys may think that I deceived you guys, but truth be told, I didn't. I just had, I had some other things planned for tomorrow. So I will be opening up two of the mega tins for, for tomorrow's video, and I'm actually really excited for that because, well, the tins are just like absolutely nuts. Uh, but for but for today's video, we actually have the discussion on the on the revealed effect of of Yorishiro of the Aqua, uh, the first of the new uh, the new Fallen of Albas uh, fusions, the tokens, the reprints, uh, the new Mayakashi support, and also the first of the pendulum uh, of the pendulum of the new pendulum support for Dimension Force, which I'm actually looking forward. to. To that the most. So let's look at your let's look at Yorishiro of the Aqua, which is a four-star water aqua, obviously, um, um, with 700 attack and 2,000 defense, and both of his effects are a once per turn. Their first effect reads: You can target one water monster in your grave, apply one of these effects, but you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of the turn except for water monsters until the end phase. If this card's until the end phase, this card's level becomes this card's name level and name become that monster. So, um, so basically, with with this effect, this card becomes the level and the name of the monster that you that you targeted in your graveyard, which is which is nuts. So you can target a so you could basically target a level six, and you can go into a and you go and you can go into a rank six water exceeds right off the bat, which is not too bad. It's 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 not too bad, but excuse me. But what's crazy about about it is the second part where it says if where it says where it says if if Umi is on the field, special summon that monster in defense. So obviously it's so it can be a monster reborn, but it can also be a. Sort of like a uh, number number eight, Herald the King Genome Heritage, where it basically gains gains effects and the levels and whatnot of the monster that was that that you target on the field. This one focuses it in the graveyard, which is really which is not too bad. Second effect reads: You can banish this card from your grave, target then target one Umi in your grave, add it to your hand. So it's like a so it's like a Spell and Trap Reincarnation of Swords, which the effect is not too bad. It's not too bad. I really, I really don't think, I don't think this card is gonna is gonna be really good in the meta, just because of the fact that we have so many other cards that are that work just as good, that work just as good as 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 this one. So, but that's just my opinion. Opinion anyway. Next up, the new Fallen of Albas Fusions, the tokens and the reprints. Uh, the new cards. I'm actually excited for this one. So this is coming out of the new, of, out of the brand new uh, Fallen of Albaz uh, structure deck, which should, which which we should be getting sometime next year, if I remember right. Uh, which I'm looking forward to the most. Which actually, this is one that I'm that I'm that I'm looking forward to because I don't because even though we did get Albaz, you know, you know, support for Albaz throughout this whole year and most of last year, this will this deck. This this structure deck will really take the fallen the fallen of Abbas strategy and turn it into the new meta where where in this format Drytron and Tribrigade Zoo are still busted even though we got the ban list. So yeah, first up we have Branded Blade, which is a which is a normal trap, and both of its effects are once per turn and only once that turn. Banish any number of branded spell or traps from your grave. Spell summon that many ice blade tokens. Eight star dark dragon. Twenty five hundred attack. 
2,000 defense. So basically, you're able to summon summon as many Ice Blade tokens as you as you as you banish um, uh, Brandon spells uh, uh, spells of trust from your graveyard, which you could banish five and you get five five and you get five tokens. Which can help you go into your link plays right off the bat, which is which is absolutely crazy. Uh, second effect says you can banish this card from your grave, then target one of your banished fallen of Albaz or monsters that specifically list that target that card in their text, add it to your hand. So it's like a, so with this effect, it's like, it's like it's it's kind of like DDR, but instead of summoning it, you just add it back to your hand, which is just absolutely nuts. Next up, we have Branded Condemn. Condemnation, which is a counter trap, and the and both of its effects are hard ones per turn. So the first effect reads: When a spell or trap or monster effect is activated, that includes an effect that supposed to summon the monster or monsters. Return a fusion monster or monsters that lists the Vibas as material to the extra deck, and one you control or two from your grave. And if you do negate the activation, and just and if you do that, destroy that card. So it's basically their solemn judgment, but with the cost of literally. Sending, sending, sending um, a fusion monster from your field back into the extra deck, which is absolutely nuts, or two from your graveyard if you want, and you're negating it. So it's like soul and judgment, but with a massive cost. So it's still not too. It's not too bad. Second effect reads: so You can manage the card from your grave target. Target one brain spell trap in your grave. Accept this card. Add it to your hand. So it's again, again, it's it's another it's a, it's another form of of it's another form of of reincarnation, but for spells and traps. Which this card is really good. That's that's actually pretty buzzed. I think I think this is more more so of a two of if you were if you were if you're playing on playing on playing this card, just because just because of the fact that it says only one it says once per turn and only once that turn meaning meaning. Is a hard once per turn, so you won't be able to use it as often as you may think, unless um, unless if you ran like, like say jar jar of avarice or, or or something like that, which is fairly decent. Um, it's probably be best to play it at two. Uh, now for the now for the new fusions, we have first up we have mirror mirror jade the ice blade dragon, which is an eight star dark worm fusion. With 3,000 attack and 2,500 defense, and requires a fall, and, and requires one fall in the vow bass, plus a fusion, plus either a fusion, synchro exceeds, or a link monster, and it says you can only you can only control one mirror jade, the ice blade dragon. Second effect says once per turn, as a quick effect, you can send one fusion monster that lists fall in the vow bass as a material from your extra deck to the grave, banish a monster on the field, but its effect, banish one monster on the field, but this effect cannot be used again. Next turn, so it's basically a hard once per turn, meaning you have to use it not every single turn, but every, but every every once in a while during the during the match. Which it's still not too bad, but the second but but the third effect is where it really gets tricky, really gets crazy. If this face of fusion, if this face of fusion summon card you control leaves the field by by your opponent, you can activate this effect, destroy all, all monsters they control during the end phase of this turn. So it's basically it's basically it's basically Rikiki. Is basically Regeki, which is just absolutely nuts. Next up, we have Rubellion, the Divine Flame Dragon, which is which is an eight-star Light Dragon fusion with twenty-five hundred attack and three thousand defense, and requires one Dark Monster plus Fallen of Um uh, The effect is a once per turn. If this if this card is fusion summon, you can discard one card. Fusion summon a level eight or lower fusion from your extra deck, except this card. By shuffling fusion material, by by shuffling fusion materials listed on on it into the deck from among your cards on the field, in the, in your graveyard and or face up banished cards. But for the rest of this turn, this card cannot attack. Also, you cannot spell some monsters from the extra deck except fusion monsters. So it's basically like another form of polymerase. It, this is basically your this is basically your your destiny hero dusk topia, if you will, where. Where with Dusktopia, once you summon it, you can just automatically fusion summon anything that you, anything 
as long as you have as long as you have the materials for it. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to do anything. So that's what basically this card is. It's it's just absolutely nuts. But you gotta be careful. Hand traps and solemn judgment. Solemns will really kick you in the ass. And then of course, and then of course too, we have the the tokens. We have Albas the Shrouded and Ecclesia the Exiled. Which if you mix them, if you put them together, it basically makes up a full photo. Which I believe I'm sure you guys have probably seen on social media, which is pretty cool. Um, and and then of course, and then of course too, we have the Tri Brigade tokens. Um, the two virtuous token, and then a Albert the Wicked Dogma token. And as far as the reprints that will be in the structure deck, we have Thunder King, the Lightning Strike Kaiju, White Dragon Wyver Buster, Black Dragon Black Dragon Collapse Serpent, uh, Starleash Seyfert, uh, Keeper of Dragon Magic, Effect Veiler, Fusion Gate, Dark Ruler No More, Necro Fusion, there can be only one, which is actually a really good floodgate, actually, and Dimensional Barrier to prevent your opponent from obviously going into the Fusion Synchro or Exceeds plays if needed, uh, which is pretty cool. Honestly, the new structure today, I'm actually excited for it. I don't know if it'll be if it'll be the true new meta, but only time will tell. You never know. You never know. But now we move on into the brand new Mayakashi support. Honestly, I did not think we would ever get get the new Mayakashi support. So we have a brand new Link Monster, and we have a new trap card, a, a brand new trap card plus Reaper. So I believe we're going to be getting. So I believe. So I believe this is coming out of the new. That new uh, secret, um, that special, that secret special box uh, that that uh, that has the new, um, that has the um, the what you call it, the 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 Sky Striker cards. If you guys remember me talking about that, that's what basically the, the the new support is coming out of. So, which is pretty awesome. So first up, we have Yuki Ona, the Icicle Mayakashi. Which is a which is a link three water zombie, and it has twenty four hundred attack, and its arrows are are bottom left, bottom bottom right, and requires two or more zombie monsters. And the second and third effects are once per turn. First effect says you can only control one Yuki Ona, the Icicle Mayakashi. Second effect says if this card is special summon, you can target a, you can target an effect monster your opponent controls, negate its effects. Third effect, which is a quick effect, you can manage to come from your grave. Special summon one of your zombie synchros that is banished or in your graveyard. So not only is this a, so not only is this a, not only is this an an infinite impermanence with legs, but it's also monster, but it's also, but it can also be a DDR or a monster reborn with legs. So it's basically three cards in one. It's three. It's three. Cards in one, but on steroids, basically. And by and by steroids, I mean in the form of a fucking waifu. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, anyway. Not that there's anything wrong with waifus. I watch a lot of anime, so I got no problems with that. Truth be told, on Hulu, I'm actually watching on on Hulu. I'm watching um, uh, Wise Man's Grand Wise Man's Grandchild, and on Crunchyroll. Big shout outs to both, of course. Um, I'm currently watching um. Crunchyroll, I'm watching. I've been killing slimes for 300 years and maxed out my level. If you guys have have not seen the anime, I definitely recommend watching it. It's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. Really awesome. Really cute, actually. I have to admit. Anyway, moving on. Going going off topic. Next up, we have the normal trap card, which is known as Ghost Meets Girl and Mayakashi and Shiranui's Tale. Obviously, this is actually part of the whole Shiranui. Um, the new part, part of the Shiranui Mayakashi storyline. If you guys know anything about that, let me know in the comments because I have no idea. Let me know in the comments if you guys know. I have no fucking idea. But but the effect reads... Uh, bo uh, both effects effects are, are a hard ones per turn. First effect says, says should be one Mayakashi or Shiranui Synchro or Link monster. Neither player can supposed to summon monster from the hand deck or and extra deck. For the rest of this turn. So basically it locks you and your opponent out of summoning anything. It basically just says. Just tells your opponent. Fuck you. <laughs> like. They can't do nothing. They cannot do 
anything. So your opponent will have no choice but to pass. So this is definitely a card you definitely need to run three of and def and have at least at least a few copy at, at least a couple copies of Jar of Avarice or or some way to recycle them back into your hand or back into the deck. That way you can use the effects over and over and over again. And your opponent will have no choice but to just like quit. Just rage quit, drop their cards, rip them up, and just walk away. That's what they're probably going to end up doing with this card. Yes, it is funny. No, I do not recommend ripping cards. I do not recommend it. It's a disgrace to the game. Just as a, just, just saying. Just saying. Second, <laughs> Second effect reads... You can banish this card from your grave, then target one of your banished zombie monsters, return it to the grave. So it acts as like a... It acts as a... Sort of like a much more different version of... Of... Um... Oh, what's that one? Uh, Cyber... Uh, Cyanide Universe, I, I believe, where... Where... Um... Where... Oh, no, no, oh, no, 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 um... No... Uh, uh, Cyphering Lord Omega. Cyphering Lord. I, I was, I was thinking of s s something else. This hacks is like a Cyphering Lord Omega, where you can take cards from your, from your bash pile, put them back into your graveyard, which is absolutely crazy. And then the reprints for, for the archetype, we have Doki the Graceful, the Graceful Mayakashi, Hide, uh, Hate, uh, uh, Hajun the Wind, the Wind Mayakashi, Yuki Musume the Ice Mayakashi. Uh, Yuki Ona the Ice Mayakashi, Mayakashi Return, Doom King Baldurag, Necro World Banshee, and Zombie World. Honestly, I'm actually I've been tempted to build zombie, but I don't really know how they work. So it is unfortunate, but it is what it is. And now for the first of the new Pendulum cards from Dimension Force, which will be the next core set after Battle of Chaos. And we actually have quite a few cards to talk about, actually. We have one, two, three, four, five, five. We have, we have five new cards to talk about, so I'm going to just go into them really quickly. First up, we have Performer Pile Gen, Gen Trude. I believe is how it's pronounced. It's a four-star Dark Fiend Pendulum with 1,500 attack and 1,000 defense, and its pendulum scale is 8, and the pendulum effect is a once per turn. If you control no monsters or or all monsters you control are pendulum monsters, and you have Performer Pal Lady Angie in your pendulum zone, you can add one Odd Eyes card from your deck to your hand. So it's basically part of the Odd Eyes archetype, which is pretty cool. So basically, it acts as a... Basically, it basically acts as acts as a rota for um for the audience archetype but it has to be in in the pendulum zone and and before how lady angie has to be in um has to be in the other pendulum zone which in which ironically enough lady angie is, is actually the next card card that i'm going to talk about here in just a minute uh, the monster effect reads: You can only use the use both of its effects as a hard once per turn. First effect says: If this card is destroyed, you can place one one performer pal pendulum monster from your deck in your pendulum zone, except except this card, which is actually pretty cool. Which is actually pretty cool. It be, again, again, it's another form. It's a way to. It's a way to just ensure that you're able to get get monsters on board during. During during uh, during your opponent's turn, which is which is actually which is really good, really cool. Plus 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 by doing that, plus by doing that, and by wiping out your opponent's board off of the effects of cards like say Harpy's Feather Duster, you're able to, you're able to just combo off and and just go for game right off the bat, which is really cool. Second effect says if this card is face up in your extra deck, you can discard one Pendulum Monster, add this card to your hand. Then you can return one Perform Pal or Artist card from your Pendulum Zone to the hand, which is actually really good. It is a really excellent card. It's an it's an the effect is just excellent. It's an excellent way to have to have even more card advantage for to against against your opponent. And and if you were to add a card like say I'll say Artist Revolution Dragon as as an example. 
you're able to even you're able to make board make a board where you can have like I'll say seven negates and and a good amount of disruption in your hand on the field in in, in your back row and in your graveyard so you'll so you'll be able to just make your opponent not play any, any Yu-Gi-Oh at all which is really good now for Performer Pal Lady Angie, which is a three-star light fairy pendulum with a thousand attack and fifteen hundred defense, and its pendulum scale is one. So obviously, because that, because that, uh, uh, Gentrude is it, it has an eight scale, and Angie has has a one scale. It's basically summons summon monsters levels one through seven, which is not too bad. But you want to go for a zero scale. Come on, you want to go for a zero scale, obviously. Um, the pendulum skit, the pendulum effect says once per turn when an attack is declared involving both players' monsters, you can discard one pendulum monster. Your opponent's battling monster loses a thousand attack until the end of this turn. So it's basically, it's basically, um, it's basically um, Archfina Gilfer where your opponent just loses attack points, which just loses attack right off the bat. Absolutely insanely good. That is just absolutely nuts. Really, really, really good effect, and it's a, and it's a once per turn effect, meaning during each battle phase, right off the bat, which is pretty cool. The monster effect, both of its effects are hard once per turn. You can discard this card, and one other perform pal monster accept this card. Draw two cards. Uh, pot agreed much? Hmm, I wonder. Maybe it is a pot of greed. Who the hell knows? No, I'm I'm actually joking. I'm joking. It's basically a pot of greed. <laughs> I just want I just wanted to fuck, fuck I just, I just wanted to fuck with you guys a little bit just to get get a couple laughs in. But yeah, basically basically it's pot it's or I I wouldn't say pot of greed. I pot pot of greed. I would say I would say um I I I would actually I would actually consider this to be double dark world dealings. Basically, where you discard two cards, you draw two cards. Basically, so that that that's what I I, I would I would consider it to be. Second effect reads, second effect reads if if this card is in your grave and you control an autonomous card or from or before pal Gentrude, you can place the card in your pendulum zone. Which that's pretty good. Being able to to recycle this card back into your pendulum zone is just absolutely nuts. Now we have a brand new ritual. Which I believe this is the first time ever that we're seeing a pendulum ritual monster, which I don't think we've ever seen that before. If you guys had, I correct me, you and and, and if I am wrong, you guys can correct me in the comments because I think this might be the only one, the only one of its kind, which is absolutely crazy. It is Odd Eyes Pendulum Graph Dragon, which is a seven star light dragon ritual pendulum. Yes, that is a mouthful. With 2,700 attack and 2,500 defense, and its pendulum scale is 4. The pendulum effect reads reads that the effect is once per turn. During the end phase, you can add one, one ritual spell from your deck or grave to your hand, then return this card to the hand. So it acts as a sort so, sort of like a manju, if you will, but the cost is that you can actually compulse this card back to your hand, and you can actually summon this card right off the bat. So obviously one of the big cards that, that, that you can use is Odd Eyes Advent, which can help which can help you summon any Odd Eyes ritual that you want, which it could be Odd Eyes um oh what's that one? Oh it's, it's that one Odd Eyes uh the one Odd Eyes ritual that we got from the from the legendary dragon decks. I don't remember. Um I cannot think of it right now honestly excuse me but excuse, excuse me anyway um anyway so anyway so the monster effect reads must be either pendulum summon from the hand or ritual summon you can ritual summon this card with odd eyes advent and it has two effects first effect reads each time your opponent special summons a monster or monsters from the extra deck inflict 300 damage to them so basically if they were to use up their whole extra deck that would be what 15 times 3 if I'm, if I'm, if I'm right. So, 
So it would be 15 times 300. Basically, they're going to be losing more than half of their life points. And, and because that a lot of the decks nowadays do a lot of do a lot of of recycling, you, you know, meaning recycling the extra deck cards back back into the extra deck, they're basically going to lose all all they're going to be they're basically going to lose their life points, which is just absolutely stupid. I don't know why they would want to do that going up against this card, which is crazy. Uh, second effect reads reads once per turn when your opponent activates a spell card or or an effect as a quick effect you can place you can place this card in your pendulum zone if you do negate that effect then if this ritual summon card was placed in the pendulum zone you can supposed to summon an audience, audience monster from your extra deck so yeah basically ba basically this is kind of sort of like this is sort of like um Kind of like a solemn judgment, so so to speak, but it's more. But you don't have to pay any, pay any life points or nothing, which is absolutely crazy. The only thing you gotta do is just place a card in your pendulum zone and summon an odd eyes monster from your extra, which could be anything. It, it could even be also odd eyes vortex dragon, which is one of the big, which is which is obviously one of the big, one of the big beaters of the whole deck itself. Because it has, but because it has a good amount, a good amount of 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 interruption on board, which is awesome. And not only that, this is an endless loop. This is an endless loop. Being able to just add add Audi's Advent back back to your hand, bop, jumping this card back back to the hand. It's an it's an it's an endless loop, and your opponent is is your opponent is gonna have a whole is is gonna have a lot of trouble dealing dealing with this card unless if they were to activate a card like say call called by the grave to banish it. That's like the only thing thing that can help. But but you guys know there's always there there are so many ways to bring to bring the cards back, which is just absolutely nuts. Next up, we have the normal spell called Extra Pendulum. And the effect reads during your main phase, during your main phase this turn, you can you can conduct one pendulum summon of a monster or monsters from your extra deck in addition to your pendulum summon. You can only gain this effect once per turn. So this acts as like as like um what's that? Uh uh Blackwing Nathun Nathun the Starlight, where it basically acts as a double summon, but in this case it is a double pendulum summon, meaning meaning even if you were to pen pen pen, pen summon, um um, the first time around, you can do it again later on in the turn, which is absolutely crazy, absolutely crazy. Next, and then last but not least, we have we have Pendulum Scale. Yeah, it's actually a fucking trap card. I did not think it would be. Anyway, the effect reads reads that it is a once per turn. Of course, if you have two cards in your Pendulum Zone, apply one of these effects based on the difference between their current Pendulum Scales. So, zero, destroy two spells and traps on the field. One to three, add a level add a level two, three or four pendulum monster from your deck to your hand. Don't mind the rattling, my it's my mom's dogs. They're just being noisy. Um four to six, add a add a level five, six or seven pendulum monster from, from your deck to your hand. Seven or higher, return up to two cards from the pendulum zone to the hand. Then you're supposed to summon a pendulum monster from your hand. So you can either, so you can either twin twister your your opponent's back row, Rota a two, three, or four star pendulum monster, a five, six, or seven pendulum monster, or or you can or you can compulse two pendulum card two two pendulum cards from from the pendulum zones back to the hand and you could just sidra one one of them i don't know how how this card can get any broken but yeah it is about as broken as it comes and i have to admit i'm gonna be honest i know that triff i know that triff gaming that triff is just like it's just like salivating right now at, at the fact that we're getting new pen pendulums so far I'm gonna be honest. I am tempted to build them, but I don't know how. I don't know exactly how 
The only time I've ever worked with Pendulum with Pendulum Monsters was obviously with the DDD deck, which I do have an update for. I'll be updating. I'll be updating the deck sometime in the next couple of weeks, at, at some point. Um, but big shout out to to Shadow Realm Yu Gi Oh for that one. But that brings me to the question of the day: What are you guys' thoughts on the new Pendulum support? Let me know in the comments below. And that is going to do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoy. If you did, make sure you guys smash that thumbs up button. If you guys are new to the channel, you guys want more Yu-Gi-Oh! news videos, which you guys know normally get posted every Tuesday. But today I decided to do, do a second video just for the hell of it. Just uh, just for the hell of it. And plus, I got the tins coming out. So, But but you guys know they get, they get posted every Tuesday. But if you guys want more Yu-Gi-Oh! videos, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you guys do not miss out on any new content that comes your way and be sure to follow me on twitter and instagram all the links will be in the description below and if you guys have any family want to send me and want me to open up on the channel my address will also be in the description as well and on that this is your boy nash signing out